Rats, I'm Hamster Bomb. And I'm Zach. And you guys are watching slash listening to Hitbox, the gaming podcast where we just talk about whatever we darn well please, and you might be um, seeing double here for a moment. Yes, we're talking about some more games through the years, and uh, we're playing Doom again. Yep. Well, we are actually called... moved on to 1994. Zach, why are we talking about Zo Doom again? <laughs> uh, well, because this one is called Doom 2. <gasps> It is the sequel that came out nine to ten months after the original Doom, because the original Doom was oh that God. much of a success. Nine to ten months. Yep. Back then, people didn't get breaks when they made game sequels. No, but hey, when you're making money hand over fist to own a Lamborghini, you want more of that Lamborghini money. <laughs> <laughs> so, the reason I wanted to talk about this is, number one, mm -hmm. it's a fantastic game. Um, it builds upon the original Doom in a few subtle ways. One, it adds a new weapon, the double barrel shotgun or the super shotgun. Hit E on that, there you go. And that you exited the game. So, it added the super shotgun, which is one of the greatest gosh diddly dang shotguns ever put into video games. Okay. It can rip and tear into everything, mm -hmm. and it makes some enemies trivial. That's why they can up the uh, amount of enemies on screen. There are a few, there are a couple new additions, most notably the Revenant or the. Uh, the uh, Doot Skelly Boy, as I've heard him referred to as. Doot Skelly Boy. <laughs> Doot Skelly Boy. That's good. And he fires rockets out of his shoulders. Um, there are arch vials, which are really just painful creatures that will resurrect anything that you kill and will also just jettison you with a jet of flame and do a lot of damage. There's Mancubi, which shoot out fireballs at you. And the biggest reason I also want to talk about this is just because of the the wealth of mods that came out of this. I again. harped on... Yeah, yeah. again. But the, the thing is, a lot of more mods actually build off of Doom 2 more than Doom Ooh, 1. I got a, I got a shoddy. You did get a shoddy. But now, it's just another thing that we haven't even mentioned yet. I'm actually yes. playing it this time. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> he wanted to try, and I said, okay, yeah. go for it. I know the, the first-person stuff tends to get me very sick, but uh, alas, I still want to try these games, so... Right, and in this room, there is a switch you can actually hit E on. You were looking at it earlier. Oh, I was? Yeah, turn, turn to the left, and... Okay. Okay. Go forward. Yep, there you go. That okay. thing right there. E. There you go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, um, that, but again, a lot of mods actually build off of Doom 2 rather than Doom 1 because of the uh, several additions that were made to this game versus the original. Um, like I said, the new weapon, the new enemy types, and some of the new, um, oh, yeah. No, you can't, you don't need to interact with everything. Just well, open the door and get out. What door? <laughs> There's a door behind you. There is a well, door the behind came you. In? That door. Yes, the oh. gray thing with the red lines. Oh, okay, there you okay, go. Okay. That's a door. <laughs> Are you sure you can play this? I, I just don't know where to go. I'm the first time playing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> How dare you not play Doom 2, one of the greatest gosh diddly dang games ever made. No, but again, I'm playing it right now. What more do you want from me? <laughs> Get good, scrub. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so... Oh, like, God, I'm going to die. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, this game is also pretty unforgiving, too. You've really got to know where things are. you got to know what weapons are good against which enemy. Ah! Yeah, it's it's a phenomenal game and really just one that I just think there's an argument to be made whether the first game or the second game is better. This one for the argument that this is a continuous whole uh, game. It's all 32 levels mm -hmm. in one go. It's not broken up into episodes, but I just love the level design of the original game so much. You know, but, one you know. more thing that we should mention about this. Yes. This podcast, we're going to be going through episodes of games that go through different years. And this year is 1994. Zach really likes the first game we're talking about, <sighs> and it's going to be Doom 2. Wait, we already finished talking about, about Doom, Doom 2. 2. <gasps> yeah, you oh, were wow. too excited to talk about Doom 2. We didn't even introduce what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I I, what can I say? Doom is a good game. <laughs> yeah, twice in a row. Oh, my lord. <laughs> However, uh, this is a huge year for games, so... Oh my gosh, there are so many we have to get through, so let's try our best to try and hurry up with a... Okay, and we're back. And hey. we're going to be talking about some games that are definitely not these that we're looking at right now, of other ones that I was playing. I'm playing through the Ninja Gaiden series. I beat the first two, I'm trying to beat three. It's the only one I'm working on at the moment, by you the way. You madman, you're a better person than I am when it comes to video games. If that's all it takes is to be able to beat Ninja Gaiden, then I guess... <laughs> you, are one of the, you are among the elite. <laughs> so, uh, we are going to be talking about only one game that we can showcase on here, and it may or may not be this one at the movement. But we're going to be talking first about some games that we can't play for you guys today. And so, we're going to just start right away with those, and the first one of those that we're going to be talking about is Daytona USA. Yes. This is an arcade game. Yes, sir. Came out in 1994, released mm -hmm. by Sega, 
And it's one of those ones where it's like you actually sit down and you actually have a steering wheel, brake yeah. and pedal, brake and all that and everything. It's, I, I, it's fun. If I'm remembering correctly, now this might just be me falsely remembering playing this in arcades when I was little, but hmm. didn't like the seat also like shake and move around a bit when you... It did shake, faster. yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I am pretty sure I remember, like, it was, like, the most unreal thing. Because and... the thing about it that I love about this game, um, if you look at the picture down there, you're going to mm -hmm. see a row of cabinets. Basically, yes. uh, yeah, arcades could actually link up to 8 to 16 arcade cabinets, mm -hmm. and you could race 8 to 16 people if they all decided to sit down and play Daytona with you. I have never gotten to experience it that way. I think the one I played... Um... I don't think it was a single. It was probably one of those double units that we're seeing there, but nobody yeah. was playing with me at the time. No. Um, but uh, that's interesting. I didn't know you could do that. I, I just remember that, like, the, at the time, the graphics were phenomenal. Yes. And the fact that, like, you could actually sit down and, like, use... It felt like you were actually in a car. It right. It was so cool. There was nothing like that. No, exactly. It looked good. It ran really well. And it was, like, probably one of the greatest racing games Sega ever made. And it's definitely my favorite Sega racing game, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yes, it is. And you know what? There's so many games that we want to talk about in this episode. We're going to try and really um, speed through these. Try even to though... put the rapid and rapid fire. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Definitely make this a rapid fire so mode, even we though we want next? to talk to these uh, a little bit longer. Virtua Cop, Virtua another Cop. arcade game. Yeah. Um, so uh, in the same vein as Virtua Fighter, basically putting 3D into a shooting laser light gun. Game. Yes. Yeah, this is an on-rails shooter uh, mm -hmm. light gun game. Uh, made by, I believe, Yu Suzuki, who would go on to eventually make Shenmue. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole point of the game is you're a cop in a mm -hmm. virtual world. You're shooting virtual bad guys. Yep. And at the end of the three stages, there's a boss. You unlock a fourth stage and take down the head honcho. The cool thing about this game is that um, not only does it have like 3D models and everything, because not too long before this, we only had like 2D sprites and something like right. Lethal Enforcers. Mm -hmm. We had full 3D, and for those who can actually see this, there are little green reticles that actually pop up around the enemies. And it actually gives you a, an amount of time based on the color it is. So mm -hmm. turning from green to red, red meaning, oh man, you're about to get shot, lets you know who to actually shoot for first. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it actually the camera pans and zooms in on the enemies as they come up and the reticle moves. And the nice thing is you don't have to stick to the reticle. You can actually, if you see some bad guy in the distance, you can also you know, shoot him in the background and actually earn some bonus points. And the more bullets you can actually unload into an enemy, the more points you can get. <laughs> Very realistic uh, yeah. for a cop simulator. Just that, that's shoot right. like crazy anything that moves and you get more points. You have unlimited magnum ammo, just like real life. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> but no, the games like this with the light gun technology, I mean, we've seen some before this point. There's Light guns actually go way back. Oh gosh, But yeah. at this point, this is basically turning um, the 3D arcade light gun game cabinet into what we would later see as like House of the Dead and mm -hmm. a bunch of other stuff later that's effectively doing the same thing. This exactly. Is, in the same way that Virtua Fighter wasn't so great at an actual fighting game. It's more so known as, like, w the progenitor of what it was doing. <laughs> right, exactly. And, um, Virtual Cop, similar vein, though um, I would argue a, l a little bit more playable than Virtual Fighter. I would say it's a lot more playable, and it did lay a good mm -hmm. foundation for what to expect from future rail shooters. All right, and we are moving on to Kingsfield. Kingsfield. If you've not heard of this, it's probably because I... Now, if I'm remembering this right, it was only released in Japan. Correct. And um, you may or may not be familiar with a certain series that this is technically the progenitor of. Uh -huh. This eventually would lead them to making a game called Demon Souls, which would lead them to making a game called Dark Souls, which leading them to a certain... Now, you know, you got Bloodborne and Elden Ring. Yep, from software, baby. Mm -hmm. This is... The first game from From Software. Yep. Wow, say that three times fast. <laughs> Dude, let's not try again. Uh, but <laughs> you are you are a knight uh, in a first-person dungeon crawler. Yep. Things are very blocky, very, like, I don't know how best to describe it, like, chunky and janky in terms of the animation. Because, it's PS1. Well, the thing, too, is but, a lot of these guys were just programmers just trying to make a game. There weren't a whole lot of yeah. artists. Yeah. So the whole point is you're going through this labyrinth in order to try to do something mm, in yeah. typical from software fashion. Mm -hmm. You don't exactly get a story blasted in your face. You kind of have to learn things from context clues. So, you know, I just wanted to point it out because it's like, hey, this is a cool game from a company that would go on to make, you know, some really awesome games that I do not care for. <laughs> <laughs> and I would love to get into because I hate uh. myself. 
Uh, but yeah, this is really like just a big progenitor game. Yes, exactly. And so we wanted to make sure we spoke about it. And in a similar vein, there's another big progenitor game we also want to talk about that came out this year, and that is Warcraft. Warcraft, Orcs and Humans, yep. This is a real-time strategy game from Blizzard Entertainment. This is not their first game they made, but they're basically the first in what we'd have, we would eventually lead up to with uh, World of Warcraft. Um, so I don't know the story much about this. I've not been that big into the Warcraft universe. Yeah. All I know is that what Blizzard did is they took a lot of their RTS games that came before it and actually really streamlined an awful lot of stuff. Um, that, what, by adding a really epic and amazing story, they had all those different factions you can play as, like orcs and humans, obviously. Mm -hmm. And they would just build and build and build from there. It, I've tried it, and it's actually kind of, it's actually kind of a fun game, to be yep. honest with you. Um, I don't know how much you know about real-time strategy games or anything like that. It's one of the genres I don't dabble in as much, but, mm -hmm. um... Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm familiar with Warcraft. I did yeah. have a version of it um, when I was younger, maybe in high school. Realized right away, oh, you gotta pay monthly just to play this game? Oh, nah, man. Nah, yeah. man, I'm done. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, that did not last long. Oh, boy. Well, that's how Blizzard made their money, and that's how we yeah. got to where we are now, Yes, <laughs> lots of lawsuits and human resources management issues. That's unrelated and has nothing to do with this context. We could probably have an entire episode just talking about that, so we're not oh, going Lord. to. Let's move on to another big game that came out this year. Another one. Game. Games. Ga ga Gameses. Gameses. Yes. This one's weird. Oh, yeah. Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And Knuckles. Different. Yeah, not different, mm -hmm. very much so, from Sonic 3 and uh, so Sonic and & Knuckles. Mm -hmm. And before we get into it, yes, it is a darn shame we can't actually play this one for you guys, because no. this is not included on the Sega Genesis collection for the Nintendo Switch. Because of legal issues. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it, it, weird and stupid. But anyway, mostly stupid. Mostly stupid. <laughs> but anywho, yeah. so the reason why the game was broken up into two... Uh, because this was originally supposed to just be one big cartridge game. Right. And so, you know, Sega had a deal with McDonald's at the time that McDonald's like, hey, we want new toys for our Happy Meal. Mm -hmm. Sonic is the it thing. Can you get this to us sooner rather than later? Yeah, your game needs to release by this date to reach this toy line distribution. Sega was like, we'll try. And yep. they tried. And basically had to split the game up because they couldn't. And exactly. Yeah, because the final boss of Sonic 3 doesn't really feel like a final boss all that much. It's just Eggman in a robot with, like, long arms and claws, and he just dives at you. Yeah, you mean, like, every generic boss you fought in Sonic 1 and 2? Yeah, b basically. Mm -hmm. And so, the thing is that I like about this game is that you can play Sonic 3 by itself, and it's different uh, from the whole combined Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Mm -hmm. Sonic and Knuckles is its own thing. Together, they form... One big whole game, and they add new features. There's more Chaos Emeralds to collect. There's a lot more to actually do. And the fun thing is, uh, for those who don't know, you can actually plug in Sonic 2 into the Sonic & Knuckles cartridge, because mm -hmm. that's the way it came. Mm -hmm. Sonic & Knuckles was had a lock-on technology, quote-unquote, yeah. where you could actually just plug another cartridge into a cartridge into the console. And you can actually play as Knuckles in Sonic 2, mm -hmm. which I think is really funny and really cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember a lot of people thought that was uh, fake for the longest time, but yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look very mm, sexy when you're physically, like, linking all of your... Well, I guess it can. I when guess. you're linking all of your, like, those old uh, uh, Sega uh, <laughs> <laughs> the advertisements at the time. Uh, but the thing is the, that now, with the announcement of Sonic Origins, as a result of the movies getting out, coming out and being popular... They're we're taking... They're taking a lot of these offline on a lot of so sites where you yes. can't buy these anymore. Nope, so, but at least we'll officially have a new way to play Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles in the yes. combined game soon enough. Yes, it soon enough, hopefully, that it's, it's even hope. though it's got some devious uh, sales tactics into yeah. basically not letting you purchase it on older platforms or other ways, that which I don't agree with, but at least it's not a Nintendo move where they take it down... And you will never play it again. Yeah, Goodbye. Exactly. Uh, so I it could be worse. But the monkey's paw, the finger curl. <laughs> right. Yep. One more game, and then One I swear we're playing stuff. Yep. Snatcher. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So this is the version that we got in the States in 1994 for the Sega CD. It originally came out in 1988 for an old NEC PC exclusively in Japan. Like we all have at home. Exactly. Well, don't you? Is this not what we're playing on? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> But, turn this around. Wouldn't wouldn't you all just crap your pants? I turn the camera around and you just see this like ancient like CRT like monitor mic thing, and there's just like a wall of text and, it's, and like really grainy pictures. Yeah, and Japanese text everywhere. Yeah, 
<laughs> in like four colors. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is Hideo Kojima in between Metal Gear 2 and Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. So this... Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, not the other second Metal Gear game he had nothing to do with. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah sorry. But anyway, so this is him at his... Probably at his earliest, and I think best, Hideo Kojima. I love this form mm -hmm. of Kojima. So basically, it takes inspiration, quote-unquote, from a whole ton of science fiction. From Blade Runner, to Terminator, to Dune, to like Akira, to whatever he felt like putting in there. The whole point is, you are a junker. And the whole point is, you are going out into the world. You are taking down these Snatcher robots, who are these Terminator-looking dudes, mm -hmm. who can actually wear human skin or a, ver or a version of it and actually perfectly mimic a human person. And so the whole point of the game, it's a comic book style game where it's like you have the different sight scenes and there's little lists of like options that you can do from talking to asking about things to investigating to interacting with stuff. And the more you do it, the more information you can learn. And each screen has something totally different. In the Sega CD version, we actually have an English voice cast to actually do a really decent job for 1994 on hmm. a system that really was not known for great acting. Mm -hmm. And it's, unfortunately, it's another one of those things where the game is, is complete, but it's not really complete. Oh. Uh, we gotta Why does this keep happening with him? Uh, because the man has way too grand an ambition for most of his projects. Yeah. But, you know, it's still a really fun game, and the ending we do get is actually pretty satisfying. And unfortunately, the true ending we get in, like, a super deformed, like, game that came with, like, the final chapter of this overall saga. Yeah. But if you like adventure games, especially ones that are just, like, so full of references and so, like, just... I don't know. How, how best would you describe his, like... Um, his aura, I guess. <laughs> of... It's it's bizarre, but at the same time intriguing. That might be the best two words that combine what Kojima is. Yeah. I, I mean, think of like the, the first trailers you saw of Death Stranding. It's just odd. Why is Norman Reedus naked on a beach on and beach. it's raining crabs and there's just floating like Psycho Mantis guys in the air. And there's a baby. And a baby that's like tethered to him. And then it's just, a... it's just, it's bizarre yeah. and it's intriguing. And that's, yes. I think that's like right where he wants to dance around and make his games. Right. Aside from them being very ambitious and usually um, carrying like lots of philosophical weight, the more you dig into them, but that's yeah. just his thing. And that's usually why they get so involved that they can't really fit in games anymore. No, unfortunately. Yeah. But anyway, um, very Great game, though. There's also a really cool um, side mission you do in Metal Gear Solid V um, Ground uh, Zeroes, yes. where you basically play a Snatcher level, but it's Metal Gear, uh, and like you have to figure out which of the guards in the whole area are like uh, basically been the, taken the, over. Yeah, by the Snatcher bots. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you have to just, just take them out, not any other guards. Yep. So it, it's actually really cool, and I'm glad that they at least homage this. I'd love to see it come back, but... Konami. Konami, man, Konami. I know. Anyway, hey, look, actual games. I promised you we would play something. Hey! But yeah, um, this one, this is an interesting game. Oh, I love this game. So, when people were um, first talking about rumors of Game Boy games coming to Nintendo Switch, this was the number one game I saw everybody talking about. Yes. And there's a good reason for that. You would think, okay, why would it be such a big deal that Donkey Kong is put on the Game Boy? Sure, we all know what Donkey Kong is, and when people at the time were purchasing this, they fully expected they are buying the arcade game Donkey Kong, and yep. they are. However, this game may be the one game out of everything, and even anything to come, that will have the biggest twist ever. Yeah. I can't think of a bigger twist than what this game does. Yes, you get the original Donkey Kong game. Uh huh. As you play and beat the original Donkey Kong game, you realize that was just the beginning, and that was the first level. Yeah. The whole game is enormous. Uh -huh. And then you open up a giant game map. You go through stages, and you play through one level at a time, hunting down Donkey Kong, who runs off with, uh, I Pauline. believe it's still Pauline. Yep. And the game has completely different um, physics and mechanics to it, but it's still the same thing. Uh huh. Like it, we've got, we still have the ladders. We still have. Um, well, now we've got like enemies and stuff that are running around. You grab um, keys. I think you get um, 
just like the one before, you get uh, some goodies from yeah. uh, Pauline's things that she's dropped. Yeah, you, you have certain jumps. That. If you just saw that, I did like one of the backflips. There's uh -huh. like somersaults and stuff. Oh, oh there, there's, there's the key yeah, there's you. so many crazy things you can do in this game. Yeah, it's a really fun puzzle platformer. Like it goes from just being a really good arcade game to something you actually kind of have to think about and take mm -hmm. Mario's moves into account in order to try to achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm guessing you have to actually jump on some of these bugs in this in order to be able to get to where you need to go. Um, I don't think that was the way you had to do this one. Um, I have beaten this. I It's just oh, got okay. a weird save right now of where we happen to be. I just wanted to make sure we were somewhere past the initial um, uh, Donkey Kong because we have spoken about Donkey Kong. What was yep. so cool about this? And like there, that was like um, one of Pauline's goodies. Yep. Um, what was so cool about this was the fact that you actually would switch, yeah, and you will die if you fall too far. So it's not like yeah. the arcade where you die if you fall anywhere. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It gives you a little bit more lenience in that regard. Right, but it's it's just like... It's huge. people. Yeah, the game is so big, and people thought they were just buying Donkey Kong the arcade. And you gotta remember, you're just buying this for a Game Boy. Right. You're fine with that. Yeah. But no, this, like, it can save your progress, and it's this enormous thing. And I love that... Probably where this is the biggest twist in gaming at the time and ever will be after this point. I don't yeah. think you could ever fool your audience into giving them exactly what they thought they were buying and loads more. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's possible. That's seriously mm, like if yeah. you thought you were buying a Zelda game that was just like, um, gosh, um, Ocarina of Time, but like it ended after you beat the... Um, the Great Deku Tree Temple. Right. And that's all you thought you were getting. But instead you got, um, like, a Breath of the Wild. An enormous Ooh, thing. Or wow, yeah. It's that big. And I can't even really compare it to anything else because nothing has ever done anything this huge. And I think the best part is they didn't have to. They easily, easily could have just made what it was, the arcade classic of just the looping Donkey Kong arcade, and that's what people wanted. They were playing Tetris at the time. You gotta remember this. This is yeah. what they wanted on the Game Boy. They're pulling out it, their break at work, and they just wanted to play a little bit of that arcade game that they liked, um, and that was it. But instead, they get so much more. Uh -huh. You're playing different levels every time. There's so many techniques and enemies and everything's always changing. It's so cool. Yeah, it's a phenomenally designed game, and actually, when I first learned about this game, I didn't know about this game's existence until after playing Mario vs. Donkey Kong and late on the Game Boy's Advance's life. Yeah, yeah, the um, Mario and the Minis, I think, was also another kind of a spin-off that they did of this. Yeah, for the DS, yeah. Yes, because the, they, they still kept tweaking with this, but they could never again, like, replicate what this game did. <laughs> right, exactly. So it's just, it's... It's a really fun game. I would say, you know, if you can get your hands on it, play it. Right, if it ever shows up on the Nintendo Switch, absolutely grab this thing Which, and play it. I hope they do, and I not do. part of, like, the giant expansion pack I one. bet that's where it's gonna go, but <sighs> we'll see. Hey, you know what? We have more consoles to even jump to, so how about we do another one of these? And we are gonna be playing a little bit of Beyond Oasis. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have even heard of this, which is kind of a shame that this is a series that, well, game... <laughs> that not a lot of people know about. Yeah, game, well, series of only two games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, Beyond Oasis, or also known as the story of Thor outside of the U.S. Don't ask me how, because it has nothing to do with Norse mythology. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> nope. But this is made by Ancient. This is the company that Yuzo Koshiro and his family founded, and they made it some really good games, this being one of them. And you play as Prince Ali. And you only have three characters, so guess what your name is. <laughs> Yeah, and guess what movie came out at the time that was very popular? Prince Ali. Yep. So we you... can't say any of those because we'll get in trouble. <laughs> yep. So you play as Prince Ali, who is the prince of the kingdom of Oasis, mm -hmm. who is also a treasure hunter. You have found a mysterious gold armlet that has told you you have were destined to find this gold armlet, and a silver armlet will be found now and will cause trouble for your kingdom. The island sinks as a result of you finding it, and you got to go out and find whoever has the other armlet stop and stop him by finding four elemental spirits throughout the Kingdom of Oasis, since you are now basically the Spirit King. The thing I love about this game is that it's a Zelda-like, mm -hmm. uh, where it's like, yep, you have a knife, you have different screens you can go through, you have a dedicated jump and crouch button mm -hmm. by holding the jump button. Um, but the thing I love about this game over Zelda, the combat system. It is so much fun. Like you Yeah, can actually... it's so odd. The fact that 
you can jump. I mean, imagine if you could jump and link to the past just freely with a dedicated right. button. Yeah, so, and there's minor RPG elements, like every so often, like, enemies will drop a heart, which allows you to rank up, giving you more exper uh, giving you more HP, and giving you more um, uh, MP in order to summon the spirits with. In order to summon the spirits, you have to basically summon them with your gold armlet, allowing you to basically... Oh, there you ah! go. Yes, <laughs> that ogre is nothing to mess with. So, but you have to actually send out, like, a beam of light towards a, uh, a corresponding element to summon these various spirits. Like, for the spirit Afrit, he is a fire spirit. Mm -hmm. If you go to a campfire and use your armlet on it, you can summon Afrit. Any body of water, you can summon Ditto, who can actually heal you and use water magic. Um, you know, and so on. There's two other spirits, which make no sense because they don't fit into the classical, like, element system. One is called Shade, and he acts as your shadow and can take damage for you. And the other is named Bo, and he basically... There you go. And he basically um, is uh, Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors, and he has an insatiable appetite and can eat through, like, certain obstacles in your path. Um, the story is not really that much to write home about because yeah. it's more about the combat. It's a beat em up with an RPG story, basically. Right. Which is really cool, and I wish Sega would have stuck with this series because this could have been a good Zelda competitor, mm -hmm. I feel. Um, jeez! Jeez! <laughs> yeah, so you can actually pick up different weapons, such as swords, bows, and bombs. Um, you can actually pick up healing items and other items to summon your spirits. Um, there's a map system if you hit the L button. Um, mm -hmm. or what would be, I believe, the X button on a three on a six button Genesis controller. Right. Um, Do we mention this is a Sega game? This is a <laughs> Sega game. Yeah. Um, it's sorry. I just I just beat this game. <laughs> I literally just beat this game last night, and I had a really good time with it. It's it's a nice little condensed package. Like my, one of some of my, one of my big criticisms is that I kind of wish it was a bit more like Zelda in the fact that. It was a bit more free roaming, like where sometimes you would actually look at the screen and think, oh yeah, I can go this way to actually um, uh, explore this area, but no, you can't. If they didn't want you to go that way, they just don't let you. Right. Which is a little bit disappointing, but that's not what the game is. Exactly. So, it's, like I said, I, I liked this game a lot. I liked it a lot more than I thought, and I wish I had a Saturn so I could actually play the prequel to this game. Yeah. But... Anyway, uh, do you have any experience with this game or any thoughts? I did play a uh, ways into it. We're not actually looking at my save file. We just started fresh. Yes. Um, even though I did a pitiful job of showcasing how to fight in the game. It's, it has yeah. been a while. Um, I didn't get too far. I was really just, like, demoing it. Um, but it's really fun. I really like that it's, like, a Zelda alternative. I kind of wish it stayed as a Zelda alternative. Right. Or Well, because I've also heard other people compare it to, like, the Mana series, where it's, like, yeah. a lot more action-focused and all that. But, again, you know, for from a smaller development team, because there really wasn't that many in Yuzo Koshiro's game development team, Ancient, to really do a whole lot. So that might explain some of the things that might be considered uh, downgrades, in my opinion, from a Zelda game. But still... <laughs> I would really say, give this a shot, and I really wish Sega would go back to this and do something, uh, do something more with this, because that's another one of my big criticisms about Sega. In they general, do, yeah. they don't do anything with a lot of their IPs, and it's like you've got a gold mine of stuff to, you know. Honestly, I feel through. like the best thing that could happen to Sega is to get purchased by somebody who will. Uh, Same may, for Konami. May, maybe, maybe they I just, don't know. <laughs> I would say Konami really just wants the money. I don't know about Sega, but. It's just kind of weird that, yeah, they have access to so many cool things and they kind of don't really do much. Yeah, and this being one of them. Mm -hmm. I just love the theme that it's very much like a Middle Eastern Arabian Nights or that Thousand and One Arabian Nights story. You know, and it's just... There's so much they could do with it, Alex. I know. <laughs> there's just so much, and it makes me sad. Please play this game, guys. I think yeah. you'll enjoy it. It's very good. Yes. We have another game we actually want to play on the Switch, or rather that I have access to on the Switch, so let me jump over to that. And here we are on the Castlevania collection, which you hey. can get on the Nintendo Switch, which gives you a nice little assortment of a bunch of Castlevania stuff, and we're going to be playing one of these. Uh, this gives you, just to show you at least what comes in this, i got the original, Simon's Quest, Dracula's Curse, yep. Super Castlevania 4. We've spoken about the first three already. Actually, have we talked about 
Castlevania 4? I think we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, and also a great game. Maybe yeah. we talked about the Game Boy games as well. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe that was in like another hitbox, but almost all of this stuff has come up at one point. Uh, by the way, Kid Dracula is here, and there's a bunch Woo! of other little bonus things you can get. But yes. we're going to be playing Castlevania Bloodlines. Yep. And I think I actually played the Japanese version of this. Probably. I'm not sure, but um, the, the, it gives you the option on here, too. That's another thing you can do. Yes, you can play the Japanese versions of all these games except for Simon's Quest, which would be very difficult. Yes. Because you're trying to <laughs> interpret Japanese on top of trying to figure out what the game's about. Right. But anyway. Anyway. Yes, so, again, released for the Genesis. This is the only Castlevania game released for the Genesis for some reason. But anyway, this takes place, as you see, uh, here in 1917, around the time of World War One, And this is around the time that... Camilla wishes to resurrect Dracula. Or, sorry, Ms. no, Elizabeth Barkley. Camilla has nothing to do with it this time. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason. Yeah. Anywho, so she wishes to resurrect Dracula. And, of course, the Belmont family, for some reason uh, not yet known, we would find out later, do not wield the vampire killer whip. So this leads to John Morris here and his uh, good buddy, Lacard, who is a spear wielder, to go out across all of Europe to stop the resurrection of Dracula. So you're not just stuck in Castle Dracula itself. You actually are going around like places like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. You're going to Atlantis. You're going to Germany. Yeah, it's weird. It's so You're, you're killing cool. like... I swear, there's Nazi zombies in there's this game. There's Nazi zombies, there's Minotaurs. Yeah. Even though Nazis were not a thing in World War I, no, whatever. It, yeah, it's just weird. So, um, I actually beat the game as John Morris, which, if you want to play, this is basically your traditional Belmont. If, yep. I know he's not a Belmont, but he's a Belmont. He, yeah. Yeah, he, he plays exactly like a Belmont. Exactly. Um, Eric Lucard is actually the one that I'm going to be playing as to showcase to you guys, because this option is just interesting and very different because of the spear uh -huh. and um i believe his levels are even different yeah some of his level design actually got changed up because one of the because biggest of the things jumping mechanic yes. right yes because john morris his main mechanic that the game never really explicitly uh, states need this shot every time gotta have that shot of him just opening his spear and going i'm gonna get you dracula <laughs> or just whoever entering the castle because yeah. you just need to oh yeah um, but Maybe anyway, so with this again. I'm playing this in like the worst way possible. I oh, didn't even have a <laughs> separate Joy-Con, yeah. Because um, with John Morris, his thing is he can use the vampire there it is. killer. Yep, to actually whip on the ceiling and swing. With Lacard, he can do a high jump by pressing his spear into the ground and forcing himself up. Mm -hmm. So the level it's an design... insect lay from uh, Monster Hunter. It, yeah, it really is. It's, actually. It is. It's just an insect leaf. Huh. I That's weird. I, know, I never thought of that until um, you've just mentioned it and you phrased it like that. And there's half of a body. So the thing about this game, like the art style and like the graphics, it's so gory. It's so good. Yeah, because Sega was the <laughs> was for the cool kids. It had yeah, blood right. and gore and yeah, violence. Well, that's actually a lot of what um, designers were going for on purpose, as opposed to what you would get out of a Super Nintendo game. Yep. They say like, oh well, this is the one where we can get all the gore. You know, you slash these zombies open and they just look disgusting, man. Yes. Yeah. yeah! I forgot how to use my sub-weapon. Um, up and uh, attack, I believe. Or C, I forget. It's yeah, been a while right. since it's... I played this. Yeah, the controls are going to be weird. And then, of course, I'm playing it on a different system. Yeah, yeah. So I think it would be A on the controller for you. But anyway. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, so you still got your classical, you know, main weapon, your sub-weapons. You're still going through a gothic-style castle. You're killing everything in sight, finding wall chicken. Uh, in the wall in front of you, I thought. Nope, never mind. You can I actually... Think it looks... Si oh. Oh, yes, you can. Oh. That's so weird. <laughs> okay, yeah. But yeah, like I said, I'm not familiar as much with playing as him. Yes. Oh, I know where this is. This is the bat boost jump from um, the first game. Yes, it is. So, <laughs> actually, you can use your boost jump to get over to I, the other I side. I just That's tried. It... Will it not let you? Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, you had to do it from inside the wall. Yes. <laughs> Sucker. Benefits to having a spear. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But yeah, if you couldn't tell, we wholeheartedly enjoy this game. Castlevania's good. Castlevania's such a good series, and I wish Konami wasn't such okay. a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> just in general? Just in general. Yeah, that's a door up there. I would be backtracking. Yeah, the you other would way. be backtracking. So anyway, Let's but, not do that. Not wise. Yes, and the other thing, too, that I like about this game is that it pulls off some really interesting stuff on the Sega Genesis that it yeah. actually was not made to do or had the technology to do. Yeah. Like, there's like a semi 3D boss in this game. Like in the mm -hmm. like the first boss that we're yeah. gonna come across. He's made of like I get different... that far. I'm getting annihilated yeah. by bats. Oh no, you're gonna be fighting the giant wolf here. Right. Yes. Oh yes. Um but the thing is he's made up of different cogs and gears and like a shield and a sword, and they're all individual like 3D like 
Oh, 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 I love that sprites. effect too. Yeah, where the yeah the monster howls and it breaks the glass all around you, which That's can damage nice. you. Yeah, it's pulling off a lot of cool stuff because you got to remember the Genesis is a two years older than the Super Nintendo, Whoa. so <laughs> it's not going to be quite as capable in a lot of things. Oh god, that's so gross. Oh, I know, isn't it? His guts just hanging out, and yeah, you got to stab just like, it one yeah, more time. Yeah, you got to keep stabbing them. Yeah. God. Yeah, this game, um, it uh, doesn't pull any punches in terms of its difficulty or its art style. Yes, exactly. So, I, I love this game. Please, it's not only just available on uh, the Nintendo Switch. You can get it on PC, mm -hmm. Xbox, and PlayStation family consoles. Right, um, the only one that you've got a lot of trouble with trying to get is Rondo Blood. R Rondo and um, uh, Symphony. Yeah, which actually come together on PlayStation, I think. I believe so, yeah. I'm gonna die. Oh uh, yeah, you're probably be a good timing die. for that. Yeah. Um, but uh, another thing, I kind of prefer um, Super Castlevania over this one. Ah. Uh, I I still really like this game. I really uh, really like Super Castlevania Four though. So maybe. Yeah. I am not sure what the difference is then. Um, oh, this also hurts you, doesn't it? Uh, no, that only no. hurts you in Super, I think. <laughs> There's yes, like dripping the stuff that pop. hurts for no reason. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think the main reason you... Because the way you've told me about it is just you love the whip in Super Castlevania oh, it's 4. it's so good. Yeah, the control is so great in that yeah, game. Yeah, the control is good in that. And that it's one, almost yeah. like they uh, went back to this because the game was too easy. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was good. As if it was completing that Castlevania was too easy. Oh my god, these people... The, games were just different back then, though. Yeah, they were. Oh my lord. It's semi-3D there. Yeah, yeah, it's got some good scaling, some good rotation in there. Again, just stuff that Genesis cannot really do without some software tricks. Right. So, anyway, it's it's really great. You oh, should yeah. check this out. But uh, we should probably move on, right? We probably should, before I get too uh, far into this, because I'm just going to walk just through play, this. You'll just play through it again. Yeah, yeah just let me die. Uh, wait, just let me wait. die. No! no! <laughs> Ooh, wow, I forgot about that. Oh, that was great. You didn't see that. Uh, oh. um, he dies, the spear goes like hurtling into the air and impales you in the back when you die. That's great. Oh, uh, you double die. Oh, we got one more of these to do. And we're on the Super Nintendo, and we yeah. are going to be playing several games because this is a big year for the Super Nintendo. Oh, yes. Now, we'll just boot this guy fresh. This is um, rare at their best. I would argue, yes, that is. this is their best. We're talking about Donkey Kong Country. That's Donkey a good Kong start. Country, yes. So, Donkey Kong Country, this game is known for graphically being unbelievable on this system. Yep. So, this is all using pre-rendered graphics. Oh, we could have done two-player. Oh, uh, I don't know how... Uh, uh, if I had another I... Super Nintendo controller up here right oh, now, wow. I could have done it, but whatever. I, I couldn't have run with you anyway. Yeah, well, we're going to get distracted. So, yes. regardless, um, this is all pre-rendered graphics uh -huh. where they basically converted them back into sprites again, which is just a really creative idea already. Right. Like, how you're going to get your game to look so much better than everything else's. Exactly. This is also Rare's... Um, job to kind of bring back the Donkey Kong franchise for Nintendo. Yes. And the way that they chose to do this was so... Uh, like, it's so good with what they chose to do, but it's also so different. Right. It's it's almost like what um, Retro Studios did with a Metroid Prime. Yeah. You know, it's like, bring back Metroid for us and do it in 3D. But it's so strange and different, but it's also so good yeah. at the same time. Like, it still fits, like, the um, the general feel of original Donkey Kong. You know, that one-hit, unforgiving nature about yes. it. Yes. But just transcribed to a side-scrolling platformer that mm -hmm. I'd argue just... Well, I don't think it's much of an argument to be made, but it's feels so much better than the original <laughs> arcade game. Yes, games. that original arcade game's got problems. Oh my god, but I it's, still love it's that It's still game. good, yes. Yeah. I still really like it. But I would but... prefer to play this over Absolutely. the <laughs> <laughs> Also, uh, um, you can see I have a little companion with me, and I believe this is his debut. Diddy Kong. Diddy yeah. Kong. Uh-huh, this is a rare original character. Yes, it is. Um, it's a little weird, because yep, in one hit there, and that's yeah. it. Donkey Kong's... Donkey gone. Kong's gone. That's it. I can get him back if I get more barrels, but yeah, yeah there's like rideable animals. Um, uh -huh. There's secrets like this, yep. um, where you can like bust through walls, find bananas, uh, and you're eventually just trying to work your way around Kong Island and stop King K. Rule, right? Who is the uh, king of the Kremlin army? 
who effectively just stole your stuff, your bananas, yeah. and you're just trying to get your bananas back. That's the story. It's like, it's like no, they are they they're they're the golden bananas in this one, right? I I I remember the Kong letters. I don't know about the golden bananas. Okay, because no, I think the golden bananas are in uh, Donkey Kong 64. I'm getting it all mixed <laughs> up. Oh no. Yeah, because at first I'm thinking, yeah, you want to get your golden treasure back from the evil, <laughs> from the evil crocodiles. But then I start to think about it. It's like, wait a minute, oh, if it's not on. the gold, if it's not <laughs> yeah. the golden bananas in this one, yeah, they're trying to starve the Kongs out. Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong though. <laughs> <laughs> Man, no wonder they're so uh, adamant about getting their banana horde back. Mm -hmm. This game gets really hard later. Oh gosh, like, yes. Some of the difficulty is just like unforgivingly hard, and I, first, I don't understand what they were thinking. Well, the first world is not that bad. In no, comparison, no, but, it's mostly like the the auto scrolling like cart ride stuff. Yeah, like it gets insane immediately on the second world. You're introduced to it on the yeah. second level. And it the people is get brutal. crazy good at it. Maybe what makes the game so difficult, um, and I've actually been kind of conflicted about this. This actually might be what I would call the Ori in the Blind Forest effect, where the nicer your graphics are, the more difficult it is for the player to register what's actually a platform, what can I jump on, what can I climb or hang on, you know, what's interactable, what's foreground, what's background. Because everything's pre-rendered like this, it's just weird, because you don't really get this in three-dimensional Donkey Kong, but in this one, I think that's where I was having trouble with some of the minecart stuff, and boy, yeah. like, you'll feel like you're falling through platforms some points just because, like, the actual collision was over here, but the art kind of shows it out here. Yeah, the more, like, the nicer it looks, the better designed your game has to be yes, to be a lot more playable. Yes, it needs playable. to be perfect. Right. It needs to be as perfect as your graphics, which... I mean, that's asking a, lot. a tremendous amount at this point. Exactly. I mean, the game is great. Like, look at the rain effects if you can right. here. And also, it looks beautiful. The funny thing, too, is mm -hmm. this is the only level where we get the rain graphics. I in. know. It's so... Yeah. I forgot about it until we just started replaying it yeah. here. Yeah, oh, there you Dead go. Already just tripped. And it, it could be that simple of, like, falling into a pit and you're gone forever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a really good game. It ended up getting two sequels we'll probably not talk about here, and then no. remade versions of all three of those games for the Game Boy? Uh, yeah. Yeah, which is unbelievable. Like, Game Boy. Not even Color. Game Boy. Right. We did get a complete remake of this for the Game Boy Color. Yeah. Which, that's the how I first played this game. Mm-hmm. I still have fond memories of it, but that screen crunch, though, where you can't see any... <laughs> those minecart levels took me oh so many God. batteries. That's like um, my it's first like, time oh. playing Super Mario Brothers was on Mario Brothers Deluxe. Yep, yeah, me too. and I didn't realize that the screen was supposed to be bigger than that. It was right. just crunched in. Yeah. But yeah, that's really playing the game on an extra difficulty level that I it didn't need. Um, but still, it's a lot of fun, yes. and I'm glad that s we're sort of still getting these games. It's taken forever between some, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to ever really say that Donkey Kong series has died out. I don't think Nintendo no. will ever let that happen, but they sure can give us a long wait time between these games. Donkey Kong hasn't gotten a new game on the Switch yet. I think he's just gotten ports. Yeah. So, so that... He's due for something, Nintendo. Come on now. But we gotta get Splatoon 3 first. Of course. We gotta get more Splatoon. That, uh, there's other ones, too, that we gotta get to. Hey, look I at know. this. Look at this. The next game we want to talk about hey! is just right next to it. What a coinky dink. What a coinky dink. We're playing Mother 2, or just in the West known as Earthbound. Earthbound. So, yes. I believe we talked about Mother. Uh, on we did. Um, Hitbox, so mm -hmm. this is effectively really just the sequel to it that has nothing to do with the first one. No, nope. it's it's almost like a Final Fantasy sequel, if you want to let me go there, where Kinda. it's it's gonna be kind of like the same world, sort of the same kind of characters, but everything's different. Yeah, sort of where to like similar mechanics and similar themes, like a lot of revisited themes, mm -hmm. but it, a totally different story, like you said, with new characters, new locations. Yeah. And I I love this game. This, this game is so, is good. so strange. You know, it's kind of weird. Side tangent. Yes. Um, if we can have this. You did... Have you played um, Undertale yet? I tried it, but I could not get into it. That's what I thought was really funny, because you love this so much. Yes. But, and really, 
Undertale is a shameless knockoff of Earthbound. A good, a good it's a, one. It's a good one, but shameless nonetheless. Yeah, it wears its heart <laughs> on its sleeve. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, for what it is, it's it's interesting that um, you'd find this superior. But you just tell us why, and I'll get it started. Okay. Well, even though I have started this on here, I've also started it on uh, NSO, which it recently came to NSO. Finally. Finally, and Earthbound Beginnings or Mother One. Mm-hmm. God, I need to get into those games. As well, but again, backlog is a mile long. You and me both. I know, but anywho, so. Mint flavor. Oh, yeah, your best favorite, your favorite flavor. <laughs> Mint flavor. So, this is a game that kind of takes itself seriously and not seriously at the same time, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You are. You play as Ness, who mm -hmm. is a kid with psychic abilities. One night, you wake up uh, because a meteorite has struck the ground close by your house. And so. Oh yeah, King, your dog. And so you wake up and you're going with your neighbor, Porky, to go get his brother, Pokey, right. who's gone out in the middle of the night. You I think they both did. Uh, Pokey goes out, and but uh, Porky tries to go out as well mm -hmm. because mom is worried about him and told him, go get your little brother. He's like, I'm scared yeah. because of the dogs and ravens and stuff outside. So you help him. You meet a space-time traveler called Buzz Buzz. Who, who is a you, little... Yeah, he's, a tiny little bee-looking thing. But he's not a bee. But not a bee. Yes. He <laughs> Though, makes, minor spoiler, he will still get stomped on oh. very early in the game. And he gives you your quest. Find all eight your sanctuaries to get the tunes of the Earth in order to fight against the incoming threat of Gygas and his alien army. Whatever that is. And he doesn't even really get a chance to tell you, and you don't really know, but you just... Who cares? Go off on an adventure anyway. Yep. And that's basically it. What, what this game does really well is it starts in like this homey little rural town. And the yeah. strangest thing that happens is, oh, there was this weird thing that crashed um, from space. And yes. everyone wants to go figure out what it is. And the you keep playing and you're just seeing the weirdest, most bizarre things. And right. the game just gets crazier and crazier and crazier. Until eventually, the final boss, not much of a spoiler here, you're fighting the background. Yes. It, can it get any more bizarre than that? You are fighting just and, stuff? And I, honestly, it's basically, I think, my favorite interpretation, especially in a 16-bit game, of an eldritch abomination. Something that's incomprehensible yeah, to a human. Yes, it's so disturbing and powerful. Also, um, like, omnipotent and able to travel and be at all times at once. Yeah, yeah. Because it also, I, from my understanding, has also manipulated the beginning of the game. Because yes. I, Now, I don't want to spoil this because I would actually want you guys to play this. There is a sort of self-sacrificial ending with characters in this game mm -hmm. that involve what seems to be like a loop mechanic and yeah. it's it's really cool mm -hmm. and um so like the story is really cool and well done with this yep. um also you can move on diagonals which i, I really appreciate with oh, yeah. diagonal sprites in games like this mm -hmm. not enough of the top down stuff did that no um but yeah the, there's yeah, there's so many items you can get there's so many like abilities mm -hmm. um your psychic magic you really do develop like an rpg team so in that sense it's kind of classic Yep. Um, there's like a uh, roll down health. Yes. So say um, I'm I got hit for lethal damage. You actually watch your health roll down. You have a chance to go to your menu really quick and heal yourself or use an uh, item or you land the killing blow before it hits zero. It hits zero. If you yep. if you can pull it off before it hits zero, you still manage to survive it. And that's all you had to do. Yep. That's so cool. Exactly. And I, I think the reason why I prefer this over something like Undertale, mm -hmm. it's that sort of 1950s grounded American uh, style of game where it's like it has that reality and it keeps poking at it yeah. until it eventually unravels. Yeah. So you have that juxtaposition. You have to start. The, exactly. I think yes. I, I, I do agree with that. You have to start there because personally I'm not a huge fan of Undertale. I go both ways on that. I'll review it yeah. eventually. Just until once all the fans are quiet and calm down and get a grip, because it's a good game. It is, it's a no, good. It, it it's is. a good game. It is. I think people overblow it, and it's got some problems. But um, Earthbound, because it, like you're saying, it starts from this very homey, earthy, rural town. Yeah. And it just like slowly chisels away layers, revealing this super disturbing, weird game. Uh huh. That's what makes it so cool. Right. And yeah, Undertale starts weird and it tries to be weird the whole way through yeah and it tries to make the, the jokes from the very beginning yeah this is like funny and weird because it's gradual 
degradation into just insanity. Yeah, because, like, you're going from, like, beating up, like, runaway dogs and, like, crows with sunglasses. Yeah, and, and just your crooks items. in the streets and just right, basic, a... yeah. And eventually you're fighting, like, almost just giant walking Easter Island head monsters. Uh, yeah. You're, you're just laser, th the weirdest things. A dungeon is literally a walking golem. Yes. <laughs> but it's, like I said, it's that juxtaposition that I think, like, that I think makes the game a lot better for me. Yeah. There's also um, weird things that some people complain about, but it was actually just supposed to be, like, jokes at video games themselves. Yes. There's a lot of that in here. Like, for example, um, when you have, like, uh, more than one person in your party, you can't ride your bike. Because, nope. why would you? Yeah, you can't That do doesn't it. make any sense. <laughs> so you it's can't... like, they give you the bike, and then you can't use it because there's more people with you. Why would you? Yeah. So it's <laughs> it's it's supposed to be funny. Like, they gave you the thing, but com players might complain, like, oh, they gave me this thing to go fast, and I can't do it. If, if that kind of stuff bothers you, you're missing out on the right. jokes. The, the game is, like, it's supposed to be funny, but also, like, you don't need that bike. You really don't. And yeah. whenever it does stuff like this, you don't need it. Like, you don't need to know what your dad looks like. But he's yeah. gonna call you on the phone constantly because he is the phone. Yeah, <laughs> your, your dad, dad is, is the phone. The phone yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, that's a sad critique of work culture in general. Yeah. <laughs> um, and see, and that's and that's. Well, there's just a lot it. of other really like sad and like and, it, nice stuff in this game. Yeah, and not mm -hmm. saying like something like Undertale doesn't do a good job at like oh yeah setting yeah. things up and mm -hmm. unraveling things as things go. Looking oh yeah, at it's things still from inspired more, from this game, and right, this looking, is a great starting point. Yeah, looking at things from a more, more meta perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you said, where it there really isn't a grounded reality to mm -hmm. be able to do anything with. Right. I think. And it, if anything, you have to take its word for it. In the intro scene, which even yeah. still establishes that you're fine with there being a war of monsters and humans. Right, and which were forced underground and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. This really is like, um, what's your name? What are your friends' names? What's your dog's name? What's your favorite food? And yeah. you, you live in this little house. And that's your grounded beginning. Right. And um, I, I do really ag agree and appreciate how that starts. As well as, like, you know, you've got this annoying kid next door that you don't like, but you kind of tolerate. Yeah, exactly. Because um, he's your only neighbor who's a kid. You have yeah. to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a relatable beginning and I really do love that. And the yes. way that it just spirals into complete insanity later is yeah. just very, very fun. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend people play this, and we oh, really shouldn't please. be doing this forever. I just realized how long we were just talking about this alone. Well, this is a good game, though. I mean, how It is can... a very good game. Well, all of these are very good games. Yeah, and that's true. We have a lot of games that we just have to cut, because we don't... Oh, gosh, We just yes. don't have time to talk about all of them. Mm -mm. So, um, this next one is kind of interesting, because it got talked about recently in an odd way. Yeah. We're going to talk about Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim 2 was recently put on NSO. Yeah. And I don't know why we didn't get Earthworm Jim, but there you go. Whatever. We also didn't get Harvest Moon, and that was Japan only, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Whatever. So, um, Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim. This, um, you know what? I guess in the same vein of, uh, I'm going to compare it to Donkey Kong Country and say that this is really known for its graphics. Yeah. And, like, how wild and fluid everything, like, looks and feels. Yeah. Aside yeah. from its comparing it to Earthbound, very bizarre <laughs> world. Yeah, like it knows what it is yes. from the start, and it does not make any qualms about it. No. So the whole thing is this is Shy from Shiny Entertainment, mm -hmm. who I think this is actually their first game. This was released on both Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. I played the Genesis version, which there isn't much difference, but I think the graphics were initially made with the Genesis in mind, and they got like. Um, enlarged a little bit to fit the Super Nintendo resolution, mm -hmm. but it's not that big a deal. But you are Earthworm Jim, a normal everyday earthworm who had a spacesuit fall on top of him, giving him superpowers and a ray gun. Yes. And you've got to go save Princess What's-Her-Name from the evil machinations of Queen Slug for a butt. <laughs> I just love the animations yes. of this game. I'm completely forgetting how I even fire the darn lasers. Uh, I think it's X. Oh, there you go. yeah, you're right. So I was trying to attack yeah, the dog. Yeah, you gotta attack the dog. Well, you can hold yourself up when he's trying to get at you, like if you hold the up button. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, and that's just it. Like, the, this is. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, just pull yourself up by the seat of your pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this also, too, all the characters and a lot of the enemies were created by a comic book guy called Doug Tenable. Mm -hmm. You um, can even see, like, uh, if you can see it, this uh, refrigerator right now, 
that is pre-rendered graphics, and it's using yep. 3D to get it um, looking as good as it does. Exactly. And the, just the humor in this is just so wacky. Like, more in-your-face, like, 90s wacky than even Earthbound was. Yeah. And so, you know, you've got a refrigerator, you've got a cow sitting on a limb. Mm -hmm. What do you got to do? You mm -hmm. gotta use your head and launch the cow. Cow launched. <laughs> oh man, and it's just stupid stuff like that that mm -hmm. just really endears this game. Like, like you said, this is a game that's really known for not only its fluid graphics, uh, fluid animations rather, but its graphical style as well, mm -hmm. um, which can also kind of make for me at times some confusing level layouts. Yeah, like it's not always quite clear how you are able to proceed or what you can proceed through. Like, True. I wouldn't have thought about at one point to, you know, if I was a kid, to actually climb on some of those platforms. Yeah. You know, they didn't look solid enough. You know, it's like it's like Mario. Well, you we were actually just down. talking about that issue with uh, Donkey Kong Country. The yes. nicer the game looks or the artsier you're trying to make it, eventually you're just going to have issues like that. Yeah, exactly. And... But again, I don't think overall that it detracts that much from the I game. I don't think so either. Because this is more of a run and gun like platform shooter game where it's like you have you start with a thousand bullets. Just, yeah. just go hog wild on anything that right. like gets in your way. And it's also <laughs> very generous about giving you more um, ammunition as well. Uh, but the levels are interesting. Like you start out like you see <laughs> in fish bowl. a fishbowl. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you start out in, like, a junkyard, you eventually go to, like, the moon, and eventually you just end up in hell with a bunch of lawyers. <laughs> because, why not? <laughs> and I think the sequel, like, you eventually turn into a salamander for some reason, and you're going through the intestines of a large creature. God. It's just that kind of, like, really weird out-there thinking that I appreciate these games for. This one especially. Mm -hmm. um, but what about you? What do you feel about this one? It's funny, it's weird, yes. and it actually plays really well. Yes. For how old it is, it looks like a modern retro game. And whenever I say that phrase, it kind of bothers me inside, but that's just what the internet wants to call it. But like an indie game where someone's actually trying to make it look like a certain era, this is mm -hmm. a game that visually, like, its animations were so fluid, it was just like... Disney had some games that yeah. actually looked this fluid and looked this good, but this was also... Like, Disney wasn't going to do anything this crude. Or no, funny. Ex yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's it's bizarre. It's still really fun. <laughs> <laughs> just like Earthworm Jim's idols. His idols are really great. Yeah, where he yeah. accidentally shoots himself in the face with his own ray gun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd still recommend you play this and give it oh, a shot. Oh, abso absolutely. We have two, two, more. two more games that we're going to play on here. And they both should have come on this system. Otherwise, I'm going to be pissed. Uh, yep, Yeah, technically. Is. So, we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy VI. According to... <sighs> America. America, it's complicated. It's Final Fantasy III. This is the sixth Final Fantasy game. We didn't know that until Final Fantasy VII released as seven worldwide, and everyone went like, what? What happened between yeah, what? numbers four through six? Yeah, we yeah. would have played those. Yeah. But no. We're going to start this fresh, hopefully, so we can see the introduction of this, because, yeah. oh my goodness. It is so beautiful. Oh my goodness. So. <laughs> it's going to say three, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do have another version of it that would say six, but we're, we're going to play the Super Nintendo version. Yeah, it, it released on Super Nintendo. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter that much in the grand right. scheme of things. So moving from the other Final Fantasies to this one. Jeez, where do we even start from... From the graphics and music. Yes, it's phenomenal. There, yes. It's phenomenal. So the sprite art is really updated. It looks a lot better. And there's actual depth, especially when you get mm -hmm. to the overworld. They actually use some Mode 7 mm -hmm. technology to make it look like a sort of top down is 3D style. Yeah. Um, also, there's an absurd amount of characters that you can recruit I, in this game. Yeah, I, I think there's how like... How many is it? It's like 15 or 16. something? 16. Is it, is it 16? Yes. That's crazy. Yeah, and you can miss... Almost all. Oh of yeah, them. yeah, yeah. They, I think only um, there's a small amount that are necessary to beat the game, but yeah, Correct. you can miss a ton of them. Actually, I think you can get through with one. Is you, that possible? Well, I've seen it, but I think you have to they are going the to game. give. You, yeah, right. They're going to give you characters throughout the main story. So yeah, and some come and go. Like they're living their lives. They are all kind of. What I think is really cool about this one. They're all kind of their own main character, doing their own thing. Yes. And they may cross paths with you at certain points and uh -huh. join up with you as you realize, you know, you have similar goals. Um, and it's not 
typical JRPG in that sense, and I think that's really cool. Yeah, exactly. Another thing that's really big about this one um, is its aesthetic, and we're going to kind of see some of that in this intro if you're reading through or watching this. Um, Final Fantasy is a little less medieval and a lot more steampunky. This time around, yes. Yes, and it will hang on to that for seven. Yeah. And um, eight? Mm -hmm. and it will actually kind of... It comes and goes. It kind of goes back with nine, and uh, ten is like different types of fantasy, but yes. um, really, that's is like its own mechanical world. And um, to kind of set up the story, um, very simply put, um, there was like this huge war a long time ago where people were trying to exploit magic, this new thing, and um, it ended up destroying like civilization so mm -hmm. um it was kind of locked away and just became what are called espers i believe they call them espers yes which are summons as we know them in the other games yep and those um espers now are being hunted down by a tyrannical leader who wants that power of magic for himself to take over the world basically yep. and um so there are some some rare people who are actually able to utilize magic and um, Terra, who just walked on screen here, is one of those people and is currently enslaved by this leader. Yep. And um, she's going to be freed from her um, imprisonment, imprisonment very soon in the introduction. And you're basically on the run from being recaptured, meeting up with new people, till yep. eventually there is a huge twist. Won't say what it is. Nope. Play the game yourself. And um, you're going to get completely new main characters uh -huh. and play a totally different story and um obviously it still ties in it's its own thing and just becomes like this greater narrative and it's wild mm -hmm. um there's a uh, twist that is so cool in this that i don't want to spoil here because no, i really want because, you guys to play this yeah this is on nso i believe um i think no not this one no are you sure yeah huh Okay. Yeah, it's not on NSO. Well, that's a shame. And it should be. It should be. It should be. Also, um, if anything, the Pixel Remaster just came out a that's, few months ago. That's true. So yeah. play that. I haven't played that one myself, and honestly, I here we go. I am really tempted. Oh, this is so. Yeah. So for those of you who can't see, it's the iconic walking towards Narsh scene mm -hmm. where the credits are playing overhead and Nobu Uematsu's score just kicks in. Yes. This soundtrack is outstanding. Absolutely. Um, the graphics are outstanding. Um, I feel like the story is outstanding. And the gameplay is really good. The gameplay good is still really, really good. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's so much that they do in this. It's also, it still keeps that um, Final Fantasy silly at times, which is something yeah. that, um, like, even in 7, you know, there's a lot of it in 7 that's really weird, and um, people were actually scared when they were remaking 7 that they were going to take out the silly. You know, it's not going to work. How are right. you going to do the, the weird, crazy stuff? But no, they totally did it, and like, because that's the personality of the game. It's it's very serious in telling its story, um, but at the same time, it's still lighthearted and fun. Yeah. And I, I think that it's doing all those things really well at the same time. I've heard that Final Fantasy VII is called... Uh, they said that it was a bunch of silly characters in a serious story. That makes sense. Because, you know... The, I see that. Yeah, whereas the remake, I've heard that it's more serious characters in a somewhat sillier story. Kind of. Uh, uh, I've uh, heard. Okay. Um, I... You should just play it. I no, don't I think know. so. <laughs> but I, I figured it's um, But in this game, however, this game, you even oh, have yeah. silly characters because there are so many of them. There's a mime. There mm -hmm. is a. Uh, there's a little girl who has a magic paintbrush who can actually summon monsters that way. Uh, but you've also got your standard thief, your uh, your DPS warrior who is in the form of a samurai. Mm -hmm. Even your main villain is. He looks like a freaking clown. Yeah. He, he's basically he's basically this game's version of the Joker. Yeah, <laughs> out of his mind. Yeah. Oh gosh. Tested yes. on weird dude. Like you kind of feel bad for him, but then it's like, oh no, you're a scumbag. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> so this game is really great. Um, just for the f original Pixel Final Fantasies, in my opinion, this is the best one. Yeah. Um, there's a lot that um, Final Fantasy learns from this one, and it's almost like this is kind of like their standing point for at least um what i know from a lot of fans they look back to this one and wish that uh, newer final fantasies would do more of what this did i'm because yeah. it, it new we'll eventually talk about new final fantasy but it starts going in some very different and odd questionable directions exactly and so at the very least before we just jabber about this single game forever because i know we're already over time we have one more game to talk about and if you guys know this year in particular you're probably wondering why it hasn't come up yet Saving the best for last, baby. <laughs>
Super Metroid. Super Metroid. <laughs> Super freaking Metroid came out in 1994. Mm-hmm. Zach, this. Yes. Is the greatest game ever made. Ah, I see. <laughs> ever made. All right. Why is it the best game ever made? Okay. I don't even know where to freaking start. So this is Metroid 3, as mm-hmm. just showed up on screen. The story is actually continuing, however, the story does not matter for anybody who is just jumping into this fresh, and I would highly encourage you to do so. You can play this game if you have NSO. You can play this... There's so many ways to play this game. Play this game. It's it's outstanding. Mm-hmm. So, basically, everything that um, you have gotten from the... I'm going to say the original Metroid. Metroid 2 kind of did some different things, and we talked about that one. Yes. This game, my god, okay, here, I'll just go one thing at a time. I have reviewed this game, so if you want to hear me, like, give it in full, because, like, on the spot, it's it's tough to just talk about how this is so great. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, I love what the game does with its actual narrative. Um, there's a really awesome twist boss that you get at the end that yep. is just so freaking amazing. It was one of the freakiest moments I've ever seen in any game at the time. Mm. Unbelievable what they do. Um, the actual bosses themselves are so fun. The gameplay is so fun. Um, just the way that they've, I feel like, really perfected how um, the Metroid formula needs to work. Where, what well, you've seen before, you're in a large open environment uh-huh. that gets bigger the more stuff you find in that environment. And this one is actually designed specifically in a way that um, you don't realize they're doing it, but the developers are actually trapping you in certain segments to make sure that you find certain things early on to teach you how the game works so you think you're in a huge environment but you really aren't because like when you pass a certain wall maybe a little thing collapsed behind you and now you're in this small area and you have to figure out get this next upgrade find the charge beam find the missiles and beat the boss that is in the next room over. Once you yep. do that, you find super missiles. You use the super missile to open the green door. And from that point, like it really starts opening up and you realize you have certain problems. Like maybe you fell down a shaft that's so far you cannot jump your way back yep. up again. Mm-hmm. You just keep exploring. You find an ice beam. Now you can freeze the enemies to jump back up or you could keep looking around, find the speed booster and just blast your way back up. There's yep. the, the way that the game is designed, it's effectively set up so that you can pretty much play it in any way you want. You could put dozens of hours into this game. You could beat the game in two and a half hours, which when I boot this up and play it fresh anymore, that's about how long it takes me to beat this game. And I still love it. I don't know how many times I've beaten this game. <laughs> the graphics for this game are beautiful. Yep. The There's even voicing in this yep. on the Super Nintendo, and it's pretty good. I think we have not hit it just yet. We, it's, we did. It, we did. It was in the, it's in the introduction yeah, somewhere. Yeah, the Galaxy's at Peace segment. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we've already hit that. We're going into the... Um, uh, the space colony. Yep. So, oh my god, the, the game, the music, Zach. Yes. It's all of it. All of it. This game is so darn good. And it's also designed for replay value. Yep. Which is just so, oh, I just, I love it, Zach. I love it. <laughs> I I'm love surprised it. you're not doing the whole speed running <laughs> tactic of uh, aiming up and down quickly with the shoulder buttons. You want me to arm to pump? <laughs> arm pump all the way to Ridley. <laughs> I don't think it actually does anything, but uh, God, no. <laughs> uh, but um, no, I I totally. I'm not even running. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, this, this, see, this is your gushing, uh, you it know, is. over game moment. Yeah, it is. I love this game so much. No, I really do enjoy this game a lot too. Yeah. Um, probably not as much as you, but I still really, really enjoy this game. Oh, a game over. You already found the baby. I did it. Yep, won the game. Yeah. He li- we lied about it being two and a half hours. Yeah, except we have an oh, opening oh, wait, wait. boss, which I'm gonna. Oh, no. eh, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> no. What you actually want to do is deplete your health to a certain amount. It doesn't matter how much damage Ridley takes. You cannot beat him. <laughs> no, I th- actually I think you can. I, I think well, I have heard somewhere if you take no damage and you deal enough to him, he'll just fly off. Regardless. Yeah, he will fly. Yeah. O- yeah, he flies off. But you could trigger his escape. Um, but regardless, um, what's going to happen here is um, the final Metroid, which was at the end of Metroid 2. We talked about the story in that. Yep. Um, it is kidnapped by Ridley, who you thought you defeated in the original Metroid. But no. He's back and alive, and he is here to kidnap the baby for assumedly bringing them back. Yep, Ridley is changing color. Yep, yep. You, you can actually fend him off this way. It's just not the fastest way. Nobody does this. <laughs> no, no. It's just easier just to go down like 30-some-odd health or yeah, whatever Yeah, just, just take a bunch yeah. of hits. 
Um, but yeah, he's taken it back uh, to the planet Zebes, which the space pirate base has been rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Bigger and badder than ever. Uh, because, you know, it's Super Metroid. It's got to be a super base. Yep, now yep. I'm flashing, so he'll he'll go yeah, now. He'll he'll go. Yep, there he goes. We, um, I love this shot, too. He actually, like, flies into the foreground. Right. And you get shot backwards. <laughs> so It is so good. So great. So, yeah, basically the goal... Um, the game just introduced the story. It gave you a, a text-based introduction of what was happening. Yes. But also, it told its own narrative by letting you walk by these bodies. It it showed you, there's the baby, but Ridley has it. You're running out of this place because there's a timer. It's going to blow up. Yep. You have to chase, get Ridley back. You know, you, you understand. All you have to do from that wordless intro of what you played. Yep. And it's also a tutorial back. to kind of show you, like, how you run, how you jump, how you shoot. Yep. And um, there really were no um, downsides to what they had to do because you can't actually die in this segment unless you run out of time there. Yeah. Ridley yeah. can't kill you. Nope. Even though you f certainly feel like you can. Exactly. So, yeah. Oh, God. And then uh, you blast out of there, land on the planet, mm. and then it truly opens up. But, uh, no, and I agree, too. Uh, you were saying earlier about the gameplay and the power progression, how mm -hmm. you start out. Uh, why did Samus lose all of her abilities again? Not important. Don't worry about it. No, yeah, exactly. It doesn't no. even matter. You start out with the piddly little pea shooter, and by the mm -hmm. end, you have <laughs> amazing weapons. You, the plasma you, beam, the The hyper beam, beam itself. The you hyper shoot beam. through yes. walls, obliterates anything. Samus gets so stupid strong by the end of this game. Yep. But the thing is, they give you ridiculously powerful stuff that you have to take down. And what's so amazing about this, too, is watching speedrunners oh, do some crazy stuff in this some, game. Some of my favorite parts of uh, SGDQ uh, or GDQ, mm -hmm. whichever. It's games so, done quick, whichever. Yeah, yeah, summer games, winter games, whatever they yeah. decide to do. But yeah, I always look forward to a Super Metroid speedrun mm -hmm. just to see if there's any new tricks or just to see, hey, what's new with this routing or something. They can, yeah, they keep doing crazy stuff. And they've even done, uh, right now, currently the fastest way to beat the game is to go out of order of the bosses. Yeah. And that's so crazy that, actually, the one that I am the most afraid of is Fantoon. Oh, it used God, to it used yeah. to be Ridley, but since then I've gotten so good at fighting Ridley. I, he doesn't scare me anymore. Right now we're actually in the original room where um, Mother Brain was destroyed. You actually go back into this, and there's it's like hazy. It's so right. atmospheric, and it's just feel you feel this place yeah, exactly with the little bugs skittering away. But, but anyway, yeah, um, Fantoon is yes. the first one you go for in My the gosh. speed run. I can, he's so hard. <laughs> yeah, and he punishes you for using super missiles. He'll go into mm -hmm. that weird attack phase where he's invisible and just keep chucking fire at you. It's he's like nuts. I think ugh. Kray, if I remember, what was actually the last one. Like it's ridiculous. <laughs> Poor like Kray. yeah, you have to go for Kray last. Oh, and you can just decimate mm -hmm. him so quickly. There's another really creepy moment is about to happen right here. So you get oh, the morph yes. ball in the beginning. A camera. And a camera, but also you saw those heads on the floor start looking at you. Yep. And the camera looks like a physical eye and all mm -hmm. that. It's it's the details that this game has that really pushes it above even a lot of other Metroid games themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is a, only the third game in the series and on a console that's considered technically inferior to a lot of games that would come later. It's mm -hmm. like... How do you do that? I mean, this is literally lightning in a bottle. It really is. And what's a real shame about this is we're not going to see Metroid for a long time after this. Nope. And this, not only is this still arguable by a lot of people as the best Metroid game. Me. I would be in that camp too. Uh, it, it is so neck and neck between this and Dread. Mm -hmm. Dread is so good. It's so new, though, so I'm kind of... Yeah, that recency bias. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to make sure that that wears off because this is still... Such an outstanding game. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, people also say, you, you hear like a lot of famous uh, YouTubers or people who like just, just play video games or review games for a living. Yep. They will say this is their favorite video game ever. And I can see that. I, I can, can as well. Yeah. And you're telling me a game that good, that influential, wouldn't get a sequel for an ungodly amount of time. Till 2002? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. kind of two sequels at that point, but yes. Uh -huh. It's gonna take forever for us to finally get more Metroid after this point. And this is, this is so good! Oh, I know. I could, don't understand. Could you imagine an N64 Metroid? Yes, actually, some 
people are making one. I'll have to show you after this because oh, I'm. Oh, please do. I'm actually because if curious, anything, yeah. I really don't want Nintendo to see it because they keep posting stuff about like the the people who are working on the project keep yeah. posting about it, and I'm like, stop it. No. That's what happened to Prime 2D. Stop showing this stuff. Yeah, it's seriously. just gonna get shut down. It's like complete your project first, then display it. At least you have the full project out in the wild and yeah. it can never go away. Exactly. Do it like um, uh, Doctor M64 to AM2R. At yeah. least let the project exist. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, so um, we have gone way over time yet again, but uh, of course we have some of our favorite games ever that showed up in this year, and I exactly. am sorry about that. Um, so, Hopefully you Zach, guys forgive us. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. So, um, Zach, tell us, what would you say is your favorite game that came out this year? Oh, man, my favorite game. It is really difficult because, like you said, so many good games came so out in 94. Many. This is like literally a golden year for games. Mm -hmm. um, however, I will say... Despite it all, I almost gave it to Doom 2, but it's going to Final Fantasy 6. Yeah, I'm not shocked here. Because um, yes. Doom 2, to be fair, you gave one to Doom last time. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, depending on my mood, too, Doom 1 or Doom 2 is the better game. But I love what Doom 2 did later on and what mm -hmm. people did with the engine later on. Like, all the mods. That's the big reason why I love the game so much. Right. Uh, but with Final Fantasy 6, I don't even think Square personally has ever really done anything that replicated that game ever. Yeah. like or even came close the closest they came was final fantasy 7 yeah uh, but you know you actually have like a, a fun magicite system where you can customize all your characters and you can basically make powerhouses you can turn them users. into anything yes which is largely what um 7 was you right. Could basically, turn anyone into anything. But the thing is, with, with the magic site system, yeah, with the magic site system in six, though, they keep everything they learn. Mm -hmm. Unlike with FF seven, right? You have to it's take the material. The material. Off. Yeah, exactly. So you can literally have someone just do mimic Ultima spell twenty times over and just kill the <laughs> final boss yeah. just out of the blue. Um, yeah, but, you can break that game wide open. <laughs> exactly, and that's part of the reason why I like it a lot: the customizability mm -hmm. and the overall story. It's just so. It's like literally, I think. The game, one of the games for me that that I've thought thought about about, and I'm like, you know what? Games are an art. They can tell amazing yes. stories like this. And because I played this on the Game Boy Advance when it was released then in 2006, 2007, which mm -hmm. is the version I lent you, I think. Yep. And I still have it downstairs, yeah. and I'm still tempted by a certain pixel remaster. I, I know. Uh, but that's my favorite game. I've re I've lost count of how many times I've replayed that one as well. It, it's probably between somewhere between like seven to fifteen times, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what's your favorite game of uh, this year, Alex? Super Metroid. <laughs> huh? I love this game. <laughs> I thought it would have been Kingsfield. <laughs> no. Um, well, to be fair, I haven't played Kingsfield yet, so who right. knows? But um, no, no uh, it's it's definitely Super Metroid. Yeah. Um, I have played this game so many times, I have lost counts. I adore this game. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try my best to obliterate this boss. Oh, but... the the fake chose or whatever it's called. Yes, the tu the Torizo. There we go. Yep. Just got some missiles. Oh, there you go. Yep. Got to lay into him. Um, but. And so for all the reasons you said earlier, mm -hmm. I take it. I see. Yes, absolutely everything. This game is so, so good. I'm still playing it today for a reason. Oh, Actually, yeah. Actually, this is, you know what? Let me put it like this. This is the one and only video game uh -huh. that I actually make it a, a commitment every single year to beat. Ah. I, um, uh, I used to do that with Link to the Past. Uh-huh. And, um, now any, any, anymore, it's just this game. It's also taking me less time to do it too. It's less of a commitment. Yeah. I have a little little person who uh, is demanding a lot of my time, and yeah. also likes to grab my controller. That's an ex that's a real difficulty <laughs> increase right there. Try playing with a baby trying to grab your controller. <laughs> insane toddler difficulty. <laughs> yes, since I play on insane toddler. <laughs> yeah, good luck doing your speed runs after that. Oh God. Oh, so I'm yeah, normal. it's. <laughs> you, sure, the last time I played it, I was sick, oh. and she was pl jumping around on oh. like on the bed, playing and stealing my controller from me. <laughs> oh. um, but uh, what about influential? Because we like to split this into two, mainly because we can't just bear saying only one game is the best. No. It's also interesting to say, because sometimes a game is not actually the favorite one of ours to play. Sometimes there's one that's actually just... Yeah. It really just influenced the industry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, now... 
I, I think I might have changed my mind a little bit between when I wrote sure, this. Sure, tell and, us both. Well, because see, at first I put Kingsfield simply for the fact that it was the groundwork that From Software would build upon mm -hmm. in order to tell their unique brand of, you know, stories and Right, games. and I see that for, like, you know. Later. For what they became, sure. Yeah, and what they would have. I can also do. see why you would want to change it. Yeah, because again, it's not to that Super well Metroid. <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> really? It, well, yeah, it is Super Metroid. Okay. It's Get, the most influential. If anything, and you know what? Here, we'll just jump ahead. What? Obviously, my influential is Super Metroid as well. Oh my god! Let's explain why. Okay. <laughs> so, aside from the fact that this... It really wasn't so much the first game. It was this one that became that genre. Yes. That uh, we're going to know it as. Yep, the Metroidvania. Exactly. I... Hate that name. How about we say the, sh the search action? Because that's what Japan calls this. Um, yeah. Just that, that makes genre. Total sense. Yes, it does make a lot more sense of uh, just being able to go around and explore a large environment. And we kind of covered it, and you, you guys should probably already be familiar with what we mean when we say Metroidvania slash search action. Anyway. Yes. Um, but yeah, those games really can't get their bearings unless they see something that is not just doing it, but doing it like so well uh -huh. that when people may mention a remake, they'd say, don't you dare touch that game. It is perfect. This one. Yes, this is one of those games that I honestly don't even see having a successful remake. No. Ever. Because the goal of a remake really is to make the original obsolete, and I think the only thing you could do to this is really just to give it Dread's controls. Maybe. Because the controls are so good, but if you do that... Then you take what away... do you do to design? Like, what happened to Metal Gear Solid when we gave it Metal Gear Solid 2 controls with Twin Snakes? Yep. We destroyed the game's design. Exactly. What so... do you take away when you do that? Mm -hmm. Because I love... It takes a while to get used to, but I love mm -hmm. the floatiness of this game and the fact that it allows you greater control of how you want to traverse the level. Yeah, it does it feel nicer to play Sam, uh, play a Samus in later games. Sure. Yes, but this just allows for you to break the game so much more because she can mm -hmm. jump higher and farther than other Metroid games as far as I can tell. Yes, I, I love the floatiness. Like, she's never had this feel ever again. Exactly. It's like, it kind of simulates, and personally, my headcanon, the lower gravity of Zebes versus yeah. some, like, KL2, wherever she was from. Yeah. Or K2L. K whichever. Yes, K2L is where she's from, and yeah. uh, SR388 was Metroid 2. Yes. So, you know, Versus I just, Talon 4, which mm -hmm. will be Prime, um, which at this point, canonically, she's already been to, which is weird. S somehow. Because also, okay. canonically, she's been to wherever she's going in Metroid Prime 4. Think about that. Yeah. <laughs> she's already <laughs> done that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it, it's the design, like mm -hmm. you said. It's that whole usage of items to further explore and branch out and it's yeah. also it's cool way of also telling its own story through environmental clues which is what i was going to give kingsfield and mm -hmm. eventually dark souls and demon souls yeah but this is the game that basically inspired that for kingsfield and dark Souls. this really is like i don't want to go that far just because i'm obviously a huge metroid fan but this might be one of the most influential games ever made no and i totally get it this is, it's almost like this is 30% of indie games anymore. It is. It's what we're playing it right legit now. It is. Yeah. yeah. And when they're trying to emulate this genre, they're going for this game. Right. It's not Symphony of the Night. No. It's not anything. Summer Symphony, the... but Symphony is this game. Basically, with the RPG elements. Yes. It, that's really all added. And that's honestly what the Vania is, mm -hmm. which is so weird because we mentioned that in Castlevania. I think I actually yeah. made a purpose to step aside and say that in my Super Castlevania review. Yes. What you know of Metroidvania has nothing to do with what this game is. Forget that entirely. Yeah. That's no. what Super Metroid is. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre, but that's what it is. Exactly. It's power bombs. Yeah. Mm hmm. So. Uh, so, but yeah. I adore this game so much, clearly. It I has do done too. so much for the industry. Um, it's a shame that we don't have more that has come from it, but at least it's finally back and we're getting more stuff. Well, and what we have gotten mostly, there we go. for the most part, is phenomenal we mm -hmm. may not get a lot of it yes but what we do get metroid does great. not mess up <laughs> it's not seems... usually 2d metroid does not mess up <laughs> let me be go. careful about this uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh gosh, but anyway, th this game, I could go on forever. I could keep playing this game forever. I love, hey, love, love this maybe game. Maybe we might do a review of this at one point. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, actually, yeah, I have reviewed it, but uh, like mm -hmm. we did recently um, of our uh, Half-Life and Black Mesa video. We'll probably yeah. just have an entire video where we go back and just talk about a single game. And honestly, I really could just talk about this one for that long and just what it's oh, done. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so if you haven't had a chance to play this game, so what are you doing? It's on NSO. <laughs> it's on NSO. Play, play this it. thing. It's so good. I wouldn't even feel so bad if you had to play it with some nefarious purposes where you can't actually tell a lawyer how you did it. But no. whatever, just play the game, doesn't matter how, mm -hmm. regardless. That is all the time we have for 1994, which was already way too much time. <laughs> this is our longest episode yet, I think. I think so. Oh, God, sorry about that. But anyway, thanks for sticking around, everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode of Hitbox. If you enjoy the show, you can help us keep it alive by supporting us on Patreon with the links in the show notes and in this video's description. For those of you on YouTube, remember to like the video and subscribe for more, and be sure to let us know what you thought of the show and other topics you would like to hear us cover in the future. Maybe like 1995. I don't know. Random idea. Huh. A special thanks to all of our amazing Patreon members. Bye. See you.